What up guys, my name is Oakley and welcome to my new shop. Uh, it's in the basement of our new house and I am working on getting things set up. So I got some of my tools laying on the floor uh, where they're gonna be laid out and whatnot. So we got a lot of things to take care of, get a lot of things set up and make a lot of new benches and stuff. So the next couple of videos you guys are gonna see are that process in me getting more of this place situated. And one of those first things that I'm going to be doing is I have a brand new shop vac that I got the other night and I want to make a dust collector system for that. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a DIY find I found on YouTube uh, using two five gallon buckets and some plumbing that's going to use that as a dust collector. Uh, that way I can preserve my shop back a little bit better. The video was made by a YouTuber named Chris Notap, and the video is called How to Make Simple Cyclone Dust Collector. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use this as a starting point to make my own dust collector using this system or this build. After a week or so, I'm gonna give you guys an update on how well it's working, if it's actually worth trying, because relatively it was inexpensive to purchase the buckets and the plumbing to actually make this system. And I'll make sure to put a link in the description that way you guys can check out his video and get it directly from the source. So here we go. Alright so there's not much that you need for this build. Um, some PVC piping, uh, some rubber caps, and your two Home Depot buckets or five gallon buckets wherever you want to get them from. Um, Chris Notap has a list of all the supplies you need for this build so just go check out his video in the description it's got everything you need for it. Since I don't have a table set up yet, I'm going to use my table saw as a bench and get to cut. First thing you need to do is remove the handle. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is that same bucket that you took the handle off of, we're going to go ahead and cut the top two rings off just below the second ring. Here's our top ring, here's our second ring, we're going to cut just below it. There's a couple of ways that you could do this. I'm going to be using my jigsaw to go around and cut just below that second line. Chris Notap uses a Dremel oscillating saw, so you, if you have one of those, you could do that. And if you don't have either of those power tools, you could probably also use a utility knife to get through this. It'd probably take you a little while, but I think you could do it. At the same time, I would imagine, though, if you're doing a project like this, you probably have some of these power tools anyways. So the jigsaw made real easy work of that. Uh, it wasn't hard at all. The only thing I would say to be careful about is uh, go slow so that way you make sure not to wander too far down. Okay, so we're gonna take our utility knife and we're gonna clean up these, all that frill and burrs all around it. Um, he said to go around it on the inside first and then we're gonna do something similar on the outside. I'll do that in a second. So to get the outside, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our utility knife we're going to hold it diagonally up to the edge of the bucket and what that's going to do is it's going to give us a nice little curve around it. So we're going to go ahead and do that, take some of this off, and then I'll show you what it looks like when, it, when it's done. All right, so I've only gone around this one time and I've been using my Stanley normal utility knife, one of these guys. And Chris Notap in his video, he's using one of these guys, a snap-off blade knife. And this would probably work better. I just don't want to use mine to do this because I use this for other things. Uh, but it does give you a little bit better range um, that the utility knife doesn't. So just keep that in mind. This would work better, but this will work too. I just don't want to use mine. So I've gone around that five, six, seven times maybe. And so you end up, you'll end up have a little taper on here. Uh, and the idea is that this bucket is supposed to slide into that bucket now. So I'm gonna try that. He says that if it doesn't go on, just keep shaving off and it should go on eventually. So, um, 
I'm already struggling to get this on, but we will persevere and make it happen. There it is. As you can see, I've gone and done that. It actually took me dozens of time to get to a point where I could actually fit it on the other bucket. And even then it was kind of hard to get off. So I'm going to make an adjustment to the plans for the other bucket that should make it a little bit easier. But I do have the friction fit, so it does go on over top of it. This next part isn't part of Chris No Tap's uh, original plans or what he describes on the video, but I thought it might be a good idea to put a little step on the bottom of it. That way when I go to take the top bucket off, uh, I don't have to work at pulling them apart uh, from each bucket. I can just stand on this little plank of wood and then pull the top bucket off. Uh, this is just a scrap piece of wood, so you could probably use whatever size you want to so long as it sticks out. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and cut off the rim. That way it's flush with the bottom of the bucket. So I'm going to go ahead and center this as best as I can. Just eyeballing it. I'm going to go ahead and mark where I need to cut, both sides there, all around. I'm going to see if I can do this with my utility knife because I think the Dremel or the jigsaw might be a little too much, might be a little bit overkill, but we'll see. Just making sure I'm not going into that works. That works real well. Alright. If you're doing this, make sure you're cutting away from yourself. That way you don't accidentally uh, stab yourself. I'm sure many of you have done so. As well as I. So on the inside, we're going to just take another scrap of wood and we're going to place it at the bottom of it so that it's opposite of this. That way we have something to screw into and it's going to sandwich that and then keep the uh, air tightness of it. That's attached to that like so. Now the idea is we can put this on. So that's a snug friction fit and so I can just stand on my planks here and just pull that off. A lot easier. So the next thing you need is an inch and a half pipe and they need to be one and three eighths inches long so I'm just going to take this piece which is what I was able to get uh, shortcuts at Home Depot. So that way you don't have to go and buy any of the really long ones. So I'm just gonna take this over to my miter saw, cut some dimensions, and I believe you need three of these, so I'm just gonna cut three of those and do that real fast. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top part of our bucket, the one that we cut the rim off of, um, the one that goes on top. So on this part where we're gonna put our piping in, it's got some high spots and low spots, and Chris suggests that we find the low spot in it. We're going to go ahead and put our piping there, we need to mark, measure it a half inch from the edge of the bucket, and then scribe, I'm going to use a fine point sharpie to scribe and then work my way out, so that's what we're going to do now. Now we've got to do the same thing in the middle of the bucket. Now in Chris's video, his, the buckets that he's using, the center edge piece is bigger than what mine is. Uh, this is as of January 2020, so this goes literally right around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this edge to be as my guide and then I'll just gradually work out from there. The easiest way to drill these holes out is to take a stepper drill bit 
like I have here, and we're going to go ahead and drill around, and then we're going to take some snips and cut this hole out. As I'm cutting these holes out, I'd like to just go ahead and take a second, and if you're subscribed to the channel, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I'd like for you to go ahead and consider subscribing. Um, I do every little bit of everything, uh, hence the name Oakley Does Everything. From DIY, little DIY projects like this to cosplay, sewing. Um, I restored a baby grand piano, so if you haven't seen that series, go check that out. Uh, also make sure to hit that bell, so if you want to see videos that I'm putting out, you can make sure to be up to date with that as soon as they come out. That's always really helpful, and of course, just watch the videos, I appreciate it. If you're into doing a little bit of everything like I am, I think that this is a good channel for you to continue learning from. So the idea is to be able to get this fitting, or this pipe anyways, right friction fit into there. So I'm not quite there. I'm just taking a file and kind of rounding over the edges a little bit. And this is a round shape file, not just a flat one all the way around. So, I was able to get that friction fit in there. Friction, friction fit. Is that what I said? I don't know, it didn't seem like that's what I said. But yeah, anyways, friction fit, got it in there. The round edge file helped a lot get there. I'm gonna try some other tools um, on the center one and I'll let you know what works best. I might try a Dremel sanding a bit, so we'll see how that goes. To give you an idea of what worked best, I found that using the step drill to make a couple different holes, making sure that you don't go outside of your circle, worked really well to just get rid of a lot of the material. And then taking a Dremel with a sanding bit on it and then just getting really close to where you're at, just using your file to get really precise and my center hole ended up being a much better fit than my outside hole and so I'm really pleased with that. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of our couplers, our straight couplings, uh, and we're going to go ahead and put those together on the fittings that we just did. So I've got a couple here. I put one on already, but I'm going to hammer it on the rest of the way. He said that you want it to be all the way as tight as it can be or as far on as it can be. Now on the inside we're going to take our last straight coupler and we're going to put that on the center one right there and so we're just going to go ahead and press that down. So the next part confused me a little bit uh, but I think I got it figured out. So basically you have a 90 degree elbow and a 45 degree elbow and the 90 degree elbow is going to attach to the other coupling. So um, just straight down on it. And the other one, the 45, you want it to be lined up so that it basically swirls around uh, the inside of the bucket. Chris has different couplings than I did, so he used that third straight piece to basically combine them like this, um, but mine have it a male and a female so they can be attached like that. So you gotta go ahead and put the 90 degree elbow in. And you want to put the 45 degree on so that it ends up doing that pattern. So when it comes in, it's able to actually spin around it. So we're gonna go ahead and fix those in place and then I'll show you again. Alright, 
there you have it. That's what it looks like for mine. I'm trying to get some more light in there, but it's not doing a good job. But yeah, so that's what it ends up looking like. Uh, and so this guy should be right up against the wall of the bucket. The next thing we're going to do is we need to go ahead and put a screw from the side into that 45 degree knuckle that we put in there. Uh, and I'm figuring that this is just simply to make sure that it doesn't move around. So the next thing is the couplers that go onto these pipes. In Chris's video, he uses a two inch cap, rubber cap, and cuts a hole out and then sticks his vacuum in it that way. What he doesn't say is that's only specific towards his shop vac. Um, at this point, you need to make sure that you get couplings or fixtures or caps or whatever that are appropriate to the size of your hose. I'm glad I figured this out before I cut into the rubber caps that I bought because uh, the shop vac that I have uh, is a much larger hose than what he is using in his video. So I have a two inch wide open here, opening here and it's about the same size as this. So I just need a two inch to a two inch coupling which I have here. So this is gonna go over top of that and then the hose is gonna go into that I'm going to go ahead and put these on and see what it ends up being like. This is going to go into the coupler that has the 90 degree and 45 degree elbow in it. So that goes in like that. And then the coupling for the middle of the bucket, the middle of the bucket is going to go from the bucket to the shop vac. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So that way we should have good suction. Now, as far as I know, all there is left to do is to hook it all up and give it a try. We'll do that now. All right, so this is Chris No Tap Dust Collector Bucket System. This is the first time it's coming out, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> That's still a lot of suction, so that bodes well for this. So. Yeah, so this is definitely unstable. I still like the idea of having this, I just want it to not be so shaky. So just for right now, I put those two pieces underneath the other sides of the bucket and I'll fix those into place after I finish up with this. All right, so I'm taking this off for the first time. Let's see how it did. So that pops right off a little easy like. As you can see, we got some dirt and dust and everything down in there. Let's get a better look. So that's it with light in it. So we got a lot of dust and we got a lot of the stuff that we intentionally picked up, like all of our plastic shavings or whatnot. So that looks really good. Now let's go ahead and check the sh inside the shop back to see what it looks like. All right, and just to make it easy, we're going to take the hose off. There is nothing inside of that. It's perfectly clean. The filter's still clean. I know that we haven't really done much, but that is the idea. We want to keep this as clean as possible. 
Yes, all right. That worked out really well. All right guys, so it's been about two weeks since I made this project and I gotta say that I do like it. Uh, it works very efficiently. Uh, there are some things that aren't so great about it. Uh, the first thing is portability. Um, if I gotta move it anywhere, I gotta pick it up by this and just kinda move it to wherever I want it and then drag the vacuum around with me. I've seen some plans on YouTube where they make uh, stands so that they can you can put a whole shelf together to put your shop back and your dust collector system on it. Uh, I also saw one person where they took PVC piping and attached it to these little uh, clamp holders down here on the shop back and actually made a stand uh, with the shop back being the base. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe doing that in the future. Um, when it comes to actually attaching it onto the power tools, for example, miter saw, I used it on the table saw a couple times. Um, it, it doesn't really get all the stuff that you're kind of expecting it to if you've never used a shop back system. I don't even think that you'd be able to get the results you want with even a full-size dust collector system. Uh, it just seems that depending on the power tool that you're using, uh, it's going to blow stuff around and it's not going to suction everything up. I do got to say that having this dust collector and shop back system does make for easy cleanup, uh, just going around and uh, sucking it right up. Another thing that I don't like is even though I made this little stand down here to stabilize it, uh, to keep it from falling over or whatever, you still get to the point where you're reaching out a little farther and it ends up tipping over. Um, so you just gotta be careful about that. But I think once you build a stand for it, it shouldn't be any issue with that. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the shop back and see what it looks like to see if it is any cleaner. I haven't looked in here yet, so we're both we're all gonna be seeing it for the first time, so let's see how it did. One side, the other side, or here's the top. Okay, so it did okay. Um, I did peek in here one time after I did some dust collecting and there was nothing in here. Uh, but I think the reason this might be in here is because when I was vacuuming and that tipped over, I think it might have sucked some stuff out of the top. So that would be my guess as to why there's as much in here as there was. So to summarize this bill, I think this would actually be a lot better and cheaper than getting one of those little dust collector cyclones to just go on top of a single bucket. Um, I think that overall this is pretty easy. I think once you have a shelf um, or a rack, this would be ideal, an ideal setup. Uh, but yeah, so I'm happy with it. I'm going to keep using it and we'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe. Uh, if you haven't already, I know that a lot of you guys that watch my videos uh, watch without subscribing, so I would really appreciate it if you did. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.